In this second part of our animation, I want to give our animation a bit of historical context first. Raoul Hausmann is one of the very first surrealists who used collage in his artwork. Later, he was succeeded by another surrealist, Max Ernst, who used Victorian engravings in his art to create surrealist images. There are illustrators today who work really effectively in what I call composite illustration style, but basically collage. In animation, the godfather of this type of animation is Terry Gilliam, the animator for Monty Python's Flying Circus. This style of animation is utilizing photographic techniques as described here by Matthew Robbins. And they were all made by taking an object or a puppet and moving it a tiny amount and taking a photograph, moving it a tiny amount again, taking another photograph, moving it again, taking another photograph, and so on. And then when you play all these photographs back at the right speed, it gives the illusion that your object is alive. Like this cup, for example. I could take this cup and make it chase this banana across the table. In this exercise, we are going to be taking the spirit of the stop-motion surrealist style of animation and applying it in Photoshop and in After Effects. In the first part of this animation tutorial, we created the imagery in Photoshop. Watch that video over again if you'd like to see how we create this imagery. In the second part, we created the looping textures that we'll be utilizing in this animation. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating that jittery stop-motion style in After Effects. Plus, I'm going to be asking you to create something creative to put at the end of this exercise so that it's not just a simple reproduction of someone else's artwork. So let's begin. Before we begin this exercise, let's just take a look at what we are going to be reproducing. I have my master composition, and inside that master composition, you can see I have a number of other compositions. The first one is the hand composition, and that's what we are going to be starting with. This is just simply going to be the countdown sequence that we created in exercise one. But in the background, you can see that I do have some looping textures as well. I do have a wrinkled paper series of photographs that is simply a looping photographic sequence. That was created in the same way as our texture sequence was created. So I'm not going to go into the details of creating that, but I am going to talk about how we will bring these compositions and the looping textures into our main composition here as we go. Finally, as we get to the end of our countdown, I'm going to get you to create some artwork of your own. That is the event that is being counted down. So let's begin. I want you to come to the File drop-down menu and select New Project. I want you to create a composition, and we'll call this Main. For this exercise, I'm going to use this preset, HDTV 1080-24. That's high-definition television, 1080 pixels, and 24 frames per second. As you'll see, we're going to change the frame rate of this exercise, but we're not going to change it here. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. I'm going to keep my resolution full, and I'm going to make sure that my time duration is 10 seconds long. I'm going to leave my background black for the time being. I'm going to say OK. I now have a main composition. Let's start importing our artwork. The first thing I'm going to do is import file, navigate to the Photoshop file that I created in exercise one. Once I've selected that, I'm going to come down to the bottom here and say import as composition Retain Layer Sizes, and I'm going to select Open. Here it's asking me to merge my layer styles into the footage. I'm going to say OK. I now have a new composition here in my project panel, and I'm just going to double click that to open it. Here you can see I have the five hands from the original Photoshop exercise. What I want to do first is sequence these hands so that they form a countdown. Each one is going to be on the screen for exactly one second in duration. We did this layer sequencing in our second tutorial video where we sequenced our texture photos. And we're going to do it the same way, except remember, this is a countdown from five down to one. For us to sequence these properly, I'm going to select these hands in exactly that order. First with five, I'm going to hold down my shift button and select four, three, two, one. Because I've selected them in that particular order, After Effects is going to sequence them that way. Once I have them selected, I'm going to trim their layer indicators so each of these lasts exactly one second in duration. 
Now that those have been trimmed, I'm going to come to the Animation drop-down menu and select Keyframe Assistant Sequence Layers. And I'm going to select OK. Now I have each one of these hands coming on in sequence. The next thing I'm going to do, though, is take each one of these hands and align it to the center of my composition. I've opened up my Align panel in my panel stack on the right, and I'm going to make sure that Align Layers 2 is showing composition. I'm next going to align the layers horizontally by clicking on this button right here. I should now have each one of these hands in sequence aligned to the center of my composition. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move our first hand, the five hand, into position from below the screen. Though I want to give my hand a little time to get there. That means I'm going to have to move my selected layers a little bit further down the timeline. In fact, I'm going to make sure that my first layer now begins at the one second mark of my timeline. I'm going to create a very simple position change for this first layer here, I'm going to deselect my other layers and select only that layer. In order to give that hand some time to get into that position, I'm going to extend the layer indicator to the left to give it a bit of time to get there. My current time indicator is still at the one second mark. I'm going to create a position keyframe by pressing P on my keyboard and pressing the stopwatch. I now have a position keyframe. That means that as the countdown begins, that hand will be in its right position. But I'm going to move my current time indicator down the left of my timeline, just a few frames, and I'm now going to change the position of this hand by clicking it and dragging it straight down. If I hold my shift button, I can constrain that movement to strictly vertical. I now have an animation as that hand slides into place. It's a little bit quick. I might want to put my keyframes a little bit further apart just to slow that down. But I do want to give it some easing. What I'd like to do is give it an ease out effect, meaning it slows into its final position. I'm going to use my Motion 2 slider for this, and I'm going to use this bottom ease out control and drag that to the right. I now have an animation that begins quickly and ends slowly. Then exactly the one second point, this hand is in its resting position. And then as each hand shows up sequentially, they are already in place. Now, before I do anything else, though, I'm going to trim this composition around the hands. The easiest way to do that is to come to this button at the bottom of our composition window called Region of Interest. I'm going to select that button, and that gives me a crosshairs, which allows me to drag over top of my existing composition. I'm now going to come to the composition window, and I'm going to say Crop Comp to Region of Interest. I now have a, a composition that is more or less just the hands. OK, here is where I'm going to start adding that jittery stop motion effect to my elements. To do that, I'm going to use the wiggle expression. Now, I can add that wiggle expression to any property, whether it's animated or not. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. I currently have this position property, which is currently animated for hand 5. To add the wiggle property, I'm going to hold down my Option button while clicking on this stopwatch. I now have this expression window open, and we're going to type in this very simple expression, wiggle, and I'm going to put an open parentheses. It automatically puts an end parentheses in there, and I have a blinking cursor in the middle. We have to enter some values into those parentheses. The first is the rate that this expression is going to work. How many times per second do we want this thing to move? I'm going to use Eight. As you'll see, 8 frames a second is going to be our frame rate for this animation. So let's keep this wiggle effect at 8. I'm next going to put a comma. The next value that we are going to add is the amount or amplitude. How much do we want this to move? This value is in pixels, so we want a value of around 5 to 10. I'm going to start with 5 and see how that works. With that wiggle expression typed in, I'm going to click once in my composition window to accept that expression. I can now test just how much that wiggle actually moves that hand. OK, well, that's not bad. As we proceed, the frame rate is going to be adjusted. It won't look quite so smooth in the final animation, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to make one more change to this hand by changing its rotation property. I'm going to, again, select this layer. I'm going to press R on my keyboard to bring up the rotation value. Again, I'm going to hold down my Option button and click on the stopwatch. And again, that opens up my 
expression window, I'm going to add the same wiggle expression. Putting the open parentheses, it automatically puts the ending parentheses, and I have that blinking cursor in the middle. Remember, our rate of speed is going to be 8 times per second. I'm going to put a comma. The next value is our amplitude. In this case, it's going to be degrees of rotation. We don't need a very high value for us to get an interesting effect. In fact, I'm going to leave this at 1. Again, I'll let you decide what values you ultimately want to use. I'm going to test this. I'm going to bring my current time indicator beginning of my timeline, press my spacebar. Okay, I'm going to leave it at those values. I can change these any time as I proceed, but I'm going to keep those same values as I add them to my next hand, hand 4. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch the same repetitive process as I add the wiggle expression to the position and rotation values of each of the remaining four hands. Okay, I'm going to return my current time indicator back to the beginning of my timeline, and I'm just going to press my spacebar to see what this looks like. Okay, I'm going to come to my main composition here. Before I bring the fingers into this composition, I do want to bring in my texture sequences created in the previous exercise. You may not know this, but we can actually import entire After Effects projects right in to an existing project by coming to the File drop-down menu and selecting Import, Import File. Here I'm going to navigate to my Texture Sequence project, and I'm just going to import that. There, in my project panel, is the Texture Sequence after Effects project. I'm also going to import this looping animated paper texture that's in the background. I'll provide that file for you in the exercise folder. Select Import, File. You can navigate to where you have the paper sequence After Effects file, and I'm going to select Open. The first thing I'm going to do is open up the paper sequence project and double click the master composition inside of that After Effects project. This animated paper texture sequence has been brought into this timeline with the time remap effect on it and a looping expression. You can see I've created this at 10 seconds in duration, so I can bring this right into my existing main animation just by clicking and dragging straight down like that. I now have the background for my animation. Next, I'm going to open up my Texture Sequence After Effects project, and I'm going to open up the Master Composition. I really should have called this Master Texture Sequence so that I didn't get it confused with the Master Paper Sequence. I'll have to keep that in mind as I proceed here. I'm going to double-click that, and here are the two Texture Sequences that I created in the first Animating in After Effects exercise. I have two layers here. One is just an inverted version of the other. I'm going to copy and paste both of these layers into my main composition. I'm going to select the top one, and I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to come to my main composition, and I'm just going to paste it. As you can see, this is an inverted version of the original texture files. What I'm going to do is change the blend mode for this layer from normal to screen. That will ignore the black of that layer and just show the white. And you can see I now have a looping texture that exists over top of that paper. It's a fairly prominent texture, though, so I'm going to reduce its opacity by pressing T on my keyboard to open up the opacity property, and I'm going to change the value down to something much less, like 20. Now that texture is a little more subtle. I'm going to come back to this texture sequence master and this time I'm going to select the next layer, and again I'm just going to copy it, Command C on my keyboard. I'm going to come back to the main, and I'm going to paste it here. Again, I'm going to change its blend mode, but this time I'm going to change it from normal to multiply. This means it's going to ignore the white and just show me the black texture of that layer. Again, it's a bit heavy, so I'm going to reduce its opacity by pressing T on the keyboard, and reducing that down again to 20. Press return to accept that value. I now have these two texture sequences. However, because they are the same textures over top of each other, in order for me to see them as separate, I'm going to have to shift my layer indicator for one of them to the left. I'm going to do it for this one I've just pasted here, and I'm just going to drag it to the left. Now, my textures are out of sequence, meaning that I can see both at the same time. Now, before we bring in the hands, there's just one more thing I want to do. I mentioned when I created the composition for this animation that we are working at 24 frames per second. Now, 24 frames per second is, is very fast. That is the traditional frame rate of 
standard film. However, for classical animation, they use a frame rate of 12 frames per second. Animators have realized that 12 frames per second is just fast enough to maintain persistence of vision. However, because this is stop motion animation, we would actually like this frame rate to be a little bit lower than 12 frames per second. In fact, what we are going to do is make this 8 frames per second. Now, I could make that change by coming up to the composition drop down menu and coming here to composition settings and changing the frame rate here to 8. However, I'd like to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to press cancel. We are going to do this frame rate change by adding an adjustment layer over top of these layers and add an effect called the posterized time effect to that adjustment layer that will allow us to change the frame rate to whatever value we want without having to change the composition's frame rate. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to come to the layer drop down menu and select new adjustment layer. I'm going to make sure that this adjustment layer is at the top of my layer stack. This adjustment layer will affect all layers that are below it. So I'm going to keep it where it is. In my Effects and Presets panel, I'm going to click inside my Finder field, and I'm going to type in Posterize, and you'll see that Posterize Time is the second option here. I'm going to drag it over top of my adjustment layer to my composition window. I now have a Posterize Time effect in my Effects Controls panel. Currently it's set to 24, but I'm just going to type 8 and press Return. Our previously 24 frames per second animation is now 8 frames per second, meaning that things will look a little bit jerkier as we play back. You'll really notice this, though, when we bring in the hands, which we can do now. I'm going to come back to my project window. If you can't see that, though, remember, you can always come to the window drop down menu and select project, and that'll open up the project panel. I'm going to navigate down to where my one, two, three, four, five fingers for export file is, and I'm just going to click and drag that into my composition. And I can see that I forgot to turn off my background layer. I'm going to come back to my one, two, three, four, five fingers for export. And in my file, actually, I have two versions of that background. I'm going to turn off both so that I can see a transparency grid. I'm going to come back to my main composition. I'm going to make sure that my adjustment layer is at the top because I want that layer to affect all the layers below it, including the hand I've just placed. I'm going to press my space bar to create a playback. Now this looks fine, but there's still something missing. This collaged piece of paper needs to have a drop shadow. Let's select the, the hands for export file. And I'm just going to again come to my effects and presets panel. And in the finder field, I'm going to look for drop shadow. You can see there is an effect there called drop shadow. And I'll just double click the drop shadow to apply it. And there are my drop shadow settings in my effects control panel. The Direction is coming from the top left, which is fine. I'm going to give it a little bit more distance, though, by clicking here and just dragging that to the right. The shadow is a little hard edged, so I'm going to take up the softness value quite a bit, something like that. If you feel the shadow is still a little bit heavy, you can always take down the opacity value of the color. Now, this still provides the drop shadow without overpowering any of the imagery. The final step is to import the audio and sync that up with the hand animation. If you've done this correctly, the audio and the hands counting down should sync up perfectly. The last thing I'm going to ask you to do is to create something that will happen at the end of this countdown. Let me show you what I did. First, in Photoshop, I created a collage style illustration using an image of a dog and a space helmet. By adding some gradient maps and some noise, and the torn edge paper effect that we talked about in our collage in Photoshop exercise, I've created this image here. I then imported that layered Photoshop file here in After Effects, and I've added a particle effect to give him a little bit of bubble propulsion. Finally, I brought that here in the master composition where, as you can see, the fingers count down Our little space dog makes his entrance and exit. And that's all I'm asking you to do as well. You only have a few seconds at the end of the countdown, so don't make it too elaborate. Good luck, and I can't wait to see what you guys produce.